And I'm sweating bullets at this point. I'm thinking like, why am I gonna tell Judy? Good morning! We're about to film a video for Dan Sember. In our new Dan Sember shirt. If you donate to Dan Sember and if you're gonna be part of a special team, which yeah. you'll find out soon what that's about, uh, you will get a shirt. Not only will you get a shirt, but your money is going towards an amazing cause, Convoy of Hope. So we're gonna film and I get my new setup. I recorded on the floor here. I'm still debating whether or not I wanna put up that video. I did a um, an unboxing with all this makeup. I edited most of it and I was seriously like, eh. Did you find the HDMI cord? Oh, this is a different cord. I thought I had bought one, right, specific for this. So I'll have to get a new one, but we'll still be able to record. Okay. So this is just like the upgraded version yeah. of the one I had? Yeah. Just pop way better. Whoa. It gets super bright. A new camera, a new light, and I'm hoping my monitor will work this time. Because the last today. two... Not today. Oh, it's not? No, not today. Because I don't have it hooked up. But it will eventually. Oh, man. I just have to... My last two videos for It's Judy Time was kind of a fail. I couldn't focus because I couldn't see if the products are focused. So that's another reason why I'm like blah with the footage I got. Check out this footage for the first time. <gasps> oh my gosh! Look how good the um, autofocus is. You could hear everything. You could hear the laundry in the back. But this is good. You know what? I think I, I really need a new chair every time I... Um, I can't stop smiling because this is getting me so hyped for yeah. Dance Ember. Benji's been working so hard on it every single day. Yeah. Every day. And it's becoming real. We have something really exciting this year that we've never done before. We're going to be updating you very, very soon because we're going to let you have a chance to participate even before December. So we'll let you guys know. We're just working on a few and logistics. And we also get to have some amazing swag. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be Just cool. saying. Yeah. Taco truck. One of our favorite fun spots. And it's affordable. What do you want? A flauta. A flauta. I don't even know what that is. Worst rolled burrito I've ever had. <laughs> Are you satisfied, honey? Yeah. This is Judy's favorite lunchtime eats. Flautas, though? Flautas. First time. First time. And look, working while eating. The girls' boots arrived. Mia and Kira's. It's rain season. It's been raining literally all day today. Um, I ordered these boots a few days ago hoping they would come in time for the pumpkin patch, but that's okay. And they were wearing hand-me-downs from Juliana. So now they get their own pair. Aren't these so adorable? They could actually wear these for the next uh, two years. Oh, I hate the smell of this rubber. Yay! I felt so bad. I was putting on Mia's boots, the Hello Kitty ones, and she's like, ow, because they barely fit. And then the other pair of boots that um, Kira was wearing, they're actually like snow boots. So we finally have appropriate boots. You want to see something really cool? Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Huh? Huh? Aren't those yeah. so cute? Oh, you just want a treat? You don't care about your boots? Auntie Mel, were they good today? Do they deserve a treat? I think so. I told them they have to ask you. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's why they're asking that's for a treat. Like, we're, 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 yes. What do you say? Mia? Alright, thank you for sharing. Uh oh, oh, save them. Wow, These are the good you, stuff. Daddy. Here you go. No, got you one too. We worked with them once. Yummer, thank you so much. We're proud supporters. Seriously, I'm not kidding you. Sean's mom fed these to me. They're the absolute best gummy snacks in the world. Hands down. Like this, there is one other brand that I like. It's in a like a turquoise box. Here, Kira, here you go. What do you say? This is not real. Can I have one? No. Okay. 
Thank you. No, you no, can no, have no. a toy. I could have a toy? Yeah. Thank you. Let me show. Honey Bear's leaving us. It's uh, Tyson's. He has a fight. Is it MMA? Mixed I mean, martial arts. It's yeah, oh, okay, no, I'm thinking MMA. I was thinking like UFC. UFC. His friend is kind of like a brother because he grew up with him. His first fight out of state, so it's a big deal. Fun! <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what to make tonight for dinner, but we have tons of yakisoba left over from last night, so we're going to finish that. And we also have some vegetable egg rolls, which I might cook as well. So this turkey's been sitting in the freezer for a while. I put it in the fridge to defrost. It is still rock. Oh my gosh, this thing is still rock hard. I'm gonna cook it tonight for tomorrow's meal. to cut their shirts because their heads I don't you know I think it might be the shirt it wouldn't fit through this so I had to cut the bottom no no you're okay you're okay I had to remove my falsies because I was reading an article about about a mother that suffered from postpartum depression and she took her newborn's life and herself and I was just like fallen. What is it? Anyway, it was just such a sad story and I cannot imagine what the family is going through. Thinking back of when these girls were newborn, it was really tough. I mean, you know, we had twins and lack of sleep and Benji and I were always getting at it and I remember like feeling really down, really down and yeah, I, I think it's normal to have the baby blues, but to have postpartum depression is on a whole nother level. I was also fortunate to have help from the family. Like, our family was so involved, so I'm so grateful for that. I guess what I'm trying to say here is if you know somebody, whether it's a cousin or a sister or a neighbor, that just had a baby, offer help or just help anyways. Bring over dinner, something that can just relieve some of the stress. And if you are a mom, don't be afraid to ask for help. <gasps> what happened to all the crayons? Who did this? Mia! Did you do this? Kira! Kira just got here, who did this? Mia! Oh my goodness! Did Mia do this? No, I will play with that. Come here, clean it up. Kitty cat scared? Yes. Okay, mommy. then kitty cat better clean this up. Mommy. No. Nope. Do you love mommy? Yes. Can you sing your ABCs for mommy? ABCs. Uh huh. Uh, uh, okay, hold on. watch Justin Timberlake on Netflix. Hopefully it works. Our Netflix has wait, been acting wait, wait. up. Yes. Play. You guys can watch it too. Let's go turn up the volume. Because why not? YOLO! Did you say yellow? YOLO. It means you only live once, girl. Yellow? No, YOLO! Yellow? Oh my goodness, what just happened? Did it freeze? I don't know if it's our TV or... No. This cannot be happening. It just froze on me. It's not the TV anymore! What is it? I don't know. 
All right, all is good. So it's been like two and a half hours and the meat is still frozen. You know what? I could still cook it now. This is for tomorrow's lunch. What's your idea? You want to make a music video? Okay. This is gonna be perfect tomorrow when all the flavors soak into the potatoes and carrots. Hey, Nako Mia, what are you doing? This is nice. I told Juliana to change into her pajamas 10 minutes ago. Let's see what she's doing. Turn that off. Put that away and you need to go pee pee right now. I was trying to wait for wait wait for you. I didn't tell you to wait for me. I'm here in Great Falls, Montana. I almost missed the plane. I was planning on almost driving. So this is my first official story time. I'm at SeaTac Airport. I'm on time. I'm actually early, waiting for the plane. And it said it's going to be delayed. So I'm like, you know what? I don't want to just sit here. So I'm going to walk around. I went to the uh, headphone store because this thing, you know what? I need to get some nice headphones. I'm dinking around. I'm thinking about, hey, I'm going to go walk to the other side of the airport and maybe look if uh, the Bose store is open. Um, so I'm, you know, checking the time. I uh, knew what time I was supposed to depart. And guess what? The Bose store wasn't open. So thankfully, I didn't spend any time. So I was like, I should probably walk back. I'm gonna probably uh, cut it close. Literally, as I'm walking back to the terminal, the lady calls my name, says, sir, you've got two minutes before we depart for Great Falls and we will be closing the doors. I am booking my ass, literally, like sprinting with my luggage, right? Because I didn't check anything in. I'm like, I have it with me. It literally takes me 20 seconds to get back to the gate. The gate is closed and the lady that called me said, oh, I'm so sorry, I've closed the gate. I'm like, well, I gotta get on this plane. And this was so funny. She didn't even give me the time of day. So you, the Alaska lady, that didn't even respond to me saying I had to get on this plane, just walked away. I'm not kidding you, she just walked away, right? Then there was happened to be this other guy. I don't even know what his position is. He doesn't look like he works for Alaska, but he's looking at me. I was like, sir, I really need your help. He's like, no, they closed the gate. There's nothing we can do. I convince him. He's like, well, let me make a phone call. And he's calling, but it doesn't look very hopeful. He literally just kind of looks like he's just gonna do it as a courtesy. Finally, somebody else at another gate said, hey, come over here to him, not even to me. They're telling me, oh, don't be near me because I'm like looking all frantic. I see the plane and they're about to leave. And um, so she tells him, okay, I think I can help it. But she has to get uh, permission and she's telling me, and finally I go over there and she's like, no, I don't think it's gonna happen. I was like, I, I really need to get on this plane. But I was like, you guys called me. I, I was here in 20 seconds. So then uh, finally she gets permission. Now this other guy who is supposed to open the gate says they can't open the gate. So he has to call up somewhere in the cloud or whatever to open the gate because it's not activated from, from the computer or whatever. So I don't even know where the original guy is. He's like, walk, he walked towards a plane for some reason. I'm uh, calling my master, uh, Mr. Lin. I was like, hey, you guys need to tell them I'm at the gate so they don't leave, right? And I'm sweating bullets at this point. I'm thinking like, why am I gonna tell Judy? 
the number one thing I was worried about is like what Judy would think. And I'm thinking I'm gonna fucking have to drive all the way to Montana, which takes about nine to ten hours. Like maybe I should get like a Corvette. Maybe I should get like Infinity, something fast. Um, anyways, but I didn't want to do that. Finally, they opened the gate. Somebody up there opens the gate. And then the guy asked for my ticket. This was so funny. The original guy that made the phone call took my ticket, put it somewhere so I didn't have one. So the guy had to turn the computer on. Since they closed the gate, they also closed all boarding passes, printing. So he couldn't even print. So he's like, you need to wait. And literally, I mean, like, I, I feel the plane leaving. And he's telling me I have to wait a few more minutes. He can't restart the computer. He can't get my boarding pass. Finally, the lady who initially called the plane said, you just need to go. You need to run, go to the elevator, and go to level five. I'm thinking, okay. So I'm running, right? I go into the elevator. I'm frantic at the So I'm kind of pissed at myself. And there's no level five, okay? There's like three different buttons. None of them say levels. It's just like ramp concourse something else I'm like oh my god I'm so late at this point like I have like minutes so I literally just press a button I think it said ramp and when it opens up it's the original guy saying and go you need to come so I'm like I'm just sprinting right through the gate I see uh, my destination I go it's a tiny little plane everyone's kind of waiting like the uh, the crew and everything outside I kind of like throw my luggage at this guy's like give it to me it's like handing it off and I jump on, my seat is right in the front luckily, and I just sit down, I'm just sweating, and this is just, this is the funniest part. The guy that I saw that opened, that, when I, the elevator opened and I saw that guy, the original guy that made the phone call, asked me for my ticket. I was like, sir, you took my ticket. So I'm thinking at this point, like, are they even gonna let me sit on this plane? Because no one at any point has checked my ticket. So anyways, he had to go find my ticket, which he said he left at the desk originally. So anyways, that's my story time, honey. I love you. Made it here. Miss you guys. I miss you ladies. And uh, good night. Night night, Mia. Night night, Kira. Night night, Ata Juliana. Yes. It's day two of all the girls sleeping in one room. Last night was interesting because the music kept playing. And usually it turns off after 10 minutes, so I was kind of skeptical. So I was watching on the monitor. Juliana just kept replaying the music, and I caught her trying to wake up Kira. I told her I saw her. I said if she does that again, she doesn't get to sleep in the room. But other than that, no problem. None of them, they weren't fighting or arguing. They didn't stay up late. So, oh my gosh, it might actually happen. Our dream was for all of them to just sleep in one giant room and they could be like the best sisters ever. Because we never wanted just Mia and Kira to have their own room up until whatever age and then Juliana be left out. So it actually might work out. Anyways, gonna call it a night and we will see you tomorrow.